here at school and I'm off on the train to York for a gin tour, a block up north get together and we're on a gin tour with Brewtown Tours. Now you know me, I don't normally drink but I will obviously have to taste the gin as we go to lots of independent distilleries across York. So come join us for our block up north day and I've got a Greg's vegan sausage roll and it's yummy. This is my alternative Chinese New Year Day celebration. First stop, York Tap Craft Beer House. Is it open? So we just popped in the hotel at York Station to get a drink um, as York Tap's closed, but they were, are you walking in off the street? So we're gonna go for a coffee at Fillmore and Union instead. Hello. <laughs> uh, we're off to, uh, so three distilleries. The first one's Cooper King, which is just south of Easingwold, Chris and Abby, and they've been going about a year. And the second one's over to Rare Bird in Malton. Um, and that is Matt and Lucy, and they've been going just under two years. Um, you will be able to get food there. They're, they're in Talbot Yard, and there is a butcher's, a baker's, a ice creamery, a patisserie. So, yeah, it's very nice. Uh, there's even a coffee place as well, so uh, if they're open. And then finally, we're going down to Barnby Moor next to Pocklington to Hooting Owl to Dominic, and they're probably the newest uh, distillery uh, that we go to. And. Um, Afterwards, if you want, uh, so that would be the standard tour. If one of the uh, distillers drops out, we go to Gray's Court Hotel in York for a gin tasting after two distilleries. But if the event will be a special event, they can do the gin distillery and then go for an afternoon tea with gin sampling at the Gray's Court Hotel as well. So if you want to go and check that out, um, you've got to get dressed up as Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn to get in there because it is uh, proper old. I. Uh originally from Teesside um, and my memories of my first gin and my mum always having a, Ga a Gordon's dry ginger with a Schweppes and an ice and a slice and that's kind of one I grew up with and funnily enough that's one I kind of makes me feel homely and warm and uh, um, originally I was uh, went to Sheffield University ended up going to Australia and they don't really have gin over there rarely really? but just before I left a couple of little distilleries started up and they started getting a craft gin scene and then when I came back I set up Brewtown Tours uh, which was uh, all about brewery tours to start with and I had so many conversations primarily with ladies saying oh, that's a great idea for my husband if only you did a gin tour and so I've been knocking on do doors of gin distilleries and finally last year these three distilleries uh, said yes, let's give it a go. So, um, I'm not gonna say which one's my favorite because all my children are beautiful. <laughs> Isn't that right, everyone? Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I hope you enjoy the day. Um, you should be getting quite uh, different styles of gins, different flavors. And um, so, let's hear everybody else's story. I believe you have Sarah in the corner. Hey. Hi, Sarah. Hey all! Sarah, I'm Harrogate. Um, my last gin was <laughs> probably a couple of days ago um, and it was uh, a Christmas gin from M&S um, had with some ginger beer. Um, my favourite gin is gin. Um, <laughs> I've recently discovered gin. I didn't like gin when I was growing up. Uh, both me and my sister have discovered it both at the same time and now absolutely adore gin and my sister has started a collection um, so we're always on the hunt for the next best gin always going to pubs and uh, being surprised at when you ask the question do you want a gin like which one um, so yeah I'm, I've done two of Mark's beer tours previously this is my first gin tour so I'm very excited cool. And the very first gin tour, isn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, well, it's certainly the first proper one, yes. 
So I expect lots of feedback of everybody, please. If you can tell me uh, what's good, but more importantly, um, constructive criticism would be really appreciated. Where you think I can do improvements? Amber, do you want to crack on? Hi, Amber. I'm in Sheffield. Around quite a bit. I've lived in China and Poland and kind of other places in the UK. China, Poland, and the Pole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's now one more sticks on it. My memories of gin is again my mum, really strong Gordon's. I am not a fan of Gordon's, I prefer, quite like other dry gin. I think I prefer gin that tastes like something my grandma would probably bath in, like really floral botanicals. <laughs> Pictures in my head. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I feel better for laughing. Did the CD laugh? So, I'm going. My first gin was a bottle of short cross gin from uh, Northern Ireland, just outside Belfast. A uh, little place uh, called Dark Catry. Short <laughs> 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 Having a Belfast yeah, there. Uh, Chris, I'm from, uh, from uh, Carlisle, live in Wakefield. My last gin was uh, a gin and apple. Gin. Well, Mr. Hardwick introduced me. Yeah. Introduced me. What was that? That was last Wednesday. <laughs> last Wednesday. Nice gin, bad place. <laughs> yeah, very much. Uh, my gin journey started. I don't know. I used to quite like Bombay and. Bombay Sapphire, that was like my first thing that got me into gin like probably about five or six years ago. And then I managed to meet Mr. Owen as a sort of gin connoisseur of the north recently at the uh Good plug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh getting to try all sorts of weird and wacky and wonderful gins from the man over there. Oh Hi, my name's David. Um, originally, hi David. Hi. <laughs> originally from Doncaster. My first gin was a different millennium ago, so I, I won't pretend, I presume it was a Gordon's and such. Um, many years within the bar scene, so I've tried lots and lots of different gins. Um, I do have a tipple for tasting for a gin and apple, which from a conserved point of view might be a bit, uh, but it tastes really, really I good. I think it's only because I only had apple just left in the house, I called it the desperation. <laughs> <laughs> well, the desperation is a damn fine cocktail. <laughs> um, really enjoy, really enjoy new flavours, trying spirits, uh, real love of spirits. I'm really looking forward to today. Was me? Yay. I'm Dave. Hi Dave. Hi, Hi, nice Dave. to meet you. All. <laughs> uh, I, uh, my first ever experience with gin was at about 15 years old, where I filtered everything, a little bit of everything out my mum and dad's spirit cabinet, which was a cupboard oh. under the stairs, into a plastic pot bottle. Oh yeah. And drank it, and then <laughs> wondered why I was sick for four days afterwards, and I didn't really go back to spirits for a long time after that. <laughs> um, I was. I went then to university once I'd sobered up uh, and got drunk again for a few years and almost got an aerospace engineering degree. Decided that I didn't really <laughs> like aerospace engineering and I wasn't responsible enough to build aeroplanes so I sacked it off and chased a career in the drinks industry. Uh, I ended up consulting for hotels and resorts worldwide and inventing weird and wonderful ways for the world's rich and famous to get sozzled. Um, after that worked on a rum distillery in the Seychelles and then came back to the UK, ran a little craft beer bar, started distilling gin for Lee's Gin Distillery and off the back of that found some plonker to put 40 or 50,000 pounds into a distillery setup which we launched in September. Oh, did you? <laughs> What's that? I'm like, by the way. <laughs> and what was your gin called? Uh, well, it was called Nightingales, but I had a cease and desist in December, so we've had to completely rebrand. <laughs> a bit of a curveball. So it's now going to be called Waterton's Reserve, which sounds very elegant and celebrates the history of Wakefield in a, in a nice and subtle way. So who was Nightingales that were upset with you? Uh, it was a company in London called Nightingales Gin. Yeah, I didn't make that up either. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound good. <laughs> so yeah, and that's it. I'm very much a tradi traditionalist on gin. My Waterton's recipes are very much old school from the 1800s, which was his time period. But the mass market demands certain styles of gin, and I've only just recently decided to bite the bullet. My most recent gin was a rose and strawberry pink gin that I've released for Valentine's Day that had heart on the label. 
people and everything. <laughs> the pub it went into, the message me about half an hour after I landed it, and they were like, Dave, everyone's going mental for your new gin. I felt a little bit sad because it, in my eyes it's rubbish and it's pink and it's fruity. Uh, <laughs> but in another, I was thinking, isn't it nice just to be told it's, it's lovely and safe? Why label it? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was, it's not under Nightingale. Oh, okay. It was under the Wentworth Arms, Strawberry and Rose, uh, <laughs> Strawberry and Rose gin. So yeah, that's, that's me. Nice to meet you. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> nice to meet you. Hi everyone, I'm Sophie. Um, similar to Dave, not in my gin history, but in my uh, binge drinking history. Um, so I never really tasted nice alcohol. We just used it to get absolutely smashed at university on a mixture of random and cheap cocktails. Um, then since having kids, I've pretty much given up alcohol. Um, and after a few uh, stints in the paparazzi, <laughs> the newspapers so now I no longer drink <laughs> um, but I am looking forward to taste gin today and you will see that the Asian blush is very real <laughs> <laughs> as I try different gins um, and today I am blogging and vlogging um, I run a few blogs and vlogs so I've got blog up north Yorkshire families and Mamma May and I'm also doing a vlog for my YouTube channel so don't mind me but I will be asking everyone's feedback so I can include it on my blog um, but yeah so I hope you have a fabulous time Jeff over to you uh, last but not least I'm Jeff, hey, Jeff. my story is short for legal reasons <laughs> uh, my alias is Jeff and uh, Jin Dave is my probation officer <laughs> and a part of my uh, release back to society is to uh, integrate myself with various people and Dave's been kind enough to take me through the, the flavour wheel of gins having not tried it before and I've decided after careful consideration of six or seven versions my favourite is a pint <laughs> that's, that's pretty good that yeah. you, you, you've trained me well <laughs> and certain guy with a certain cap and a certain pint in a certain tank with a certain head a roll which I just give Come in and try some gin. Every bottle sold plants cheese in the Yorkshire Dales. So if you ever need an excuse. I don't need an excuse. <laughs> You'll just like, I'm planting trees as I drink. It's somewhere. Yeah. Let's have a drink. Let's have a drink. Um, we'll talk about the gin production and then the whiskey and then we'll come back in for a taste after. We often do the taste first thing, but for a lot of people their first gin and half tens maybe a little bit early, so we'll wait for your best later. Yeah. Three of the best. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Here we've got an innovation grant for, there's not many of us in the country making gin like this. Uh, this is a vacuum gin still or rotor back, rotor evaporator. Um, and essentially it's the same process, but we distill at room temperature. We draw a vacuum through the whole system, means we can, uh, instead of heating to 80 degrees, we can heat to about 30 degrees. And you'll notice when we try and smell some of these spirits later, um, really fresh and full of flavour and really vibrant. Um, so I'll talk you through our process from start to finish. So, gin starts in a not very glamorous IBC. Um, so this is 96% ethanol. It's made from UK wheat, and it's actually made just south of York in Selby. Um, you can make that yourself, and you may have heard some people say that they make the base spirit. Um, with our environmental focus, we actually choose not to, and the reason is, if we were to make that ourselves, we could do it, we could spend 20 grand on a big column, a big piece of kit, uh, we could make it ourselves, it would be so inefficient, the way we're making it, and the amount of energy you use, and the volumes we need, it's simply not worth it for us. Uh, one day's distillation is 120 bottles, so that's not like several bottles. Yeah, not for the gin, no. Uh, <laughs> the syndrome that affects about 1 in 100,000 people, uh, so the gene that it, and over at Lynn, we use our own honey in our gin. Um, we use a few other lovely things like uh, Russell Lavender, which is grown in Carrington, it's about 10 miles away from Russell Lavender Farm. We started growing some ourselves on site. We take our tank, we take our spirit, we put it in our glass, and loads of your gear. So is this one whiskey? Yeah. How different is American whiskey to? Uh, it'll be mostly to do with the, the grain, so they use a lot of corn mm. uh, and barrels on the floor. It'll be into the German like? in a few days. 
So I'll just quickly talk you through. You might already know uh, what time is it, Sarah? Sarah. 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 It's gin time. <laughs> time for gin. Yeah. If you try it neat, you then know what you're dealing with. Yeah. Um, and then tonic, we'd go two tonic to one gin to start mm. with, and then see what you think, and then make it longer if you want. Yeah. Um, otherwise, if you do that whole body. I always um, like I was at a gin festival last year, and I was always tasting the gin before anyone else did any yeah. tonic. So I hope when you smell it on the nose, um, those glasses are designed specifically to help uh, the aroma as well. There's a lot there, and it is really cardamom fresh. Cardamom is very yeah. punchy as well. It's it's it's, it's like sticking your nose in a in a jar of cardamom pods rather than. <laughs> Do you know what? That's really interesting. It's a distilled version of it, which it, it tends yeah. it tends to null it a bit. Doesn't yeah, it? yeah. Um, though some people, so I'm like you, I get cardamom and lemongrass. I get a lot of spice. Other people don't get that at all, and they get floral, honey, and lavender. Mm. So yeah. I don't know. From the nose, I definitely get the cardamom. From taste. It, the honey's kind of a revelation. Yeah, I can, yeah. I, yeah. Can, I think even without you saying it, yeah. you probably picked yeah. it up. Yeah, maybe get that there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. This is the original drawing of my great granddad. I did wonder why they were yeah, yeah, yeah. the original drawing. I know it's your. <laughs> <laughs> so our logo is a stylized version. The three Warhammers, which you can see on the top, they're the Piggott family, they're the ones that tie to the Yorkshire. We're at Rare Bird Distillery. I think it's my place to be. I'm a rare bird. Common bird. <laughs> People say I'm like the Boddington's girl, but now I'm the rare bird girl. <laughs> Who was doing I dry January? I did wet January. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It was actually ours, the final. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I was coming towards the end of my time in the fire service. I was one of the lucky ones that could still get out early. So I retired last year in September. So we set this up in October and um, I retired in September last year. So uh, it's all fairly new to me. Um, but yeah. The reason, the reason a gin distillery, why a gin distillery? Basically, um, my brother's got a brewery down in London. He's got a brewery called Brick Brewery uh, in Peckham Rye. And sat having a beer with him. What am I going to do when I retire? And he said, I'll tell you what, Matt, he says, I'll, um, I'll franchise the brewery up to you in North Yorkshire. And I said, nice idea, but there's hundreds of them up here now. And I just think it's it's quite a, a busy sort of market now. So um, we left his brewery and finished up in the city of London Gin, which is just off Fleet Street. Eight quid, which is another seven pound sixty. So that is roughly eighteen pound per bottle. Rosemary and elderberries. Oh, and Doris root. So that's the blue one. Traditional London dry, really dry. Anything else was a waste product. Got loads of space, loads of land, loads of barns. So he set up a distillery, so that's William Chase. So we buy in a neutral grain distillery. Okay? We buy in in 200 litre drums. Um, and at the moment, the cost per litre, if you pay the duty on it, is £28.70. So it does rely on a slightly sweeter tonic. So rather than the naturally light type, we recommend a Mediterranean. Eating or drinking gin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do we find that? Traditional gin. Ooh. I like it. I think there's a lot of provincial gins these days called it mental and botanicals. Yes. And yeah. you'll lose that citrus lead that, that you can't see yeah. gins used to have. Yeah. And, yeah. Bang on. You see, at the moment there's no... Um, there's a tight chain. There is no um, standardisation for, for a London dry gin at the moment. Um, so what's happening is you are getting um, so-called gins that really nice. will be your neutral grey and white spirit. So it will be sat in there with some water. Two tables full of botanicals. When you are finished, you would go home with a full 70 centilitre bottle of gin. You've made yourself unique to you. Nobody will have ever made one exactly the same because you will put different amounts of everything in it. Complimentary gin and tonics while you're here. And, uh, 
and that's it. Wow. Two and a half, three hours. So how long does it take to distill it? To distill this? Yeah. It takes around about an hour and a half. Yeah. yeah. This is how we develop the business. So yeah. on these, on, just on one of these. So 58 different versions on one of these. So this is where they do the gin school yeah. Yeah. and you get to make your yeah. own flavours. Yeah. 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 Listen, we've just been a little bit Oh, no. No, no, no. I should say that all green peppercorns are like green peppercorns, don't they? So this is Blueberg Bakery. From it's about 96% alcohol in this. Oh wow. Yeah, it's uh, what we distill from. So, uh, uh, welcome to Looting Out. Thank you. We'll get, we'll get is it that way? Thank you very much. Okay. <coughs> uh, Neil, this is Neil. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 okay. Oh, this is a this cool is dull, place. So this, is, this is my man shed. <laughs> Cracking, isn't it? I'm Tom, anyway. Hi, Amber. 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 David. David. Amber, your name. Yeah. Amber. Chris. Chris. Yeah. 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 So first thing I'll do, I'll do some, uh, I'll do some market research. So I went to Red Bird, I went to Cooper King. <laughs> um, so I got, I got a chemistry teacher, a friend of mine who's got a pistol yeah, And the other 50% is juniper, or some of the elements within juniper, and there are lots of elements within juniper. So if you can hide some of those elements and use different elements, then they will come across something that they do like. People who just say, I don't like gin, full stop, I'm a whiskey drink, here we go, all right, okay. Very There's old. a new one for Hetwish. Very old thing, so, so, so up there they can eat. I'd be up for that, mucky mouth. Yorkshire pudding's made, because Yorkshire pudding's funny. So if you have a taste of it, it's quite complex. Yeah. 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 Yeah of the signature. You I are the gin taster. So that's a gin, <laughs> <laughs> the potato spirit. So taste it and compare it to ours. You definitely get the potato taste at the end. Is it starchy as well? No, no. texture thing. It's good, you want to try But that smooth. Oh, I like Now taste that one, taste that one, taste ours. This one? So you didn't like that one? Oh, you could do the way around actually. That's why I have different opinions. <laughs> yeah. How different are they? Not good. <laughs> <laughs> do you like the vodgin? You can just have that clip as your marketing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So do I actually know what There's I'm doing? There's the vodgin. <laughs> that's the one that doesn't taste good like that. So that's Chase, vodka gin, in which they sell tons and tons and tons and tons of it. Do they sell it with tonic though? Is it is it like mixed up so it's quite... No, no, that's how it comes in that bottle, like a, there's that. Sweet. It's like a tequila smell to it. Yeah. It's just by Nemesis. Yeah. Well, taste how it's compared to it. It smells like tequila smell. Yeah. Tequila turns back stomach. It? Well, it's got a bit of potato aftertaste to the end, but you want yeah. to keep that to remind people it's vodka. Can you pass it down? Oh, yeah, like pour some and pass I don't like only because I've had a bad experience. It's got a bit of vodka. That's what I'm doing. It's really a So if you smell that, you'll get a taste of it. So that's the Cubet pepper smell. But what's so special about that pepper is against uh, normal. It's just got more flavour as opposed to just a spice. That's, that's the flavour you <coughs> So that's the pepper that's spicing it, not rather than grains of paradise. Anybody else want a uh, smoky ginger ale? Yes, please. So you don't need to drink it tonic. Now, so the reason behind, one of the reasons behind the West Yorkshire was those people who say, I don't like gin. Because you remember, if they don't like gin, it's probably not the gin they don't like, it's the quinine. Mm -hmm. So if I give them something else where the quinine is hidden, then chances are they're going to like it. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. People really like this West Yorkshire. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. It is proper nice. You serve that in a, like a WKD bottle, as if it was going to be some alcohol. 
Yeah. You never guessed it was gin. No. Now you've made those changes. The first one was the uh, star on East that made yeah, it. You get a buddy. You want to be a gin buddy? Just make it doubled up. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be wasted? Join, join my so yeah. No, I don't want to be wasted. That's the point. I've got to win somehow. <laughs> right, seriously, mate. What we use it back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <hate that. laughs> um, sitting here, so we mature. I've been there for over a week just to let the alcohols mix together. And then we come through with this machine, which will bottle four bottles every fifteen seconds. Oh wow! Oh, wow. So, it's, so it's quick. Yeah. Everybody else bottles with jugs and things. You know, yeah. it's it's they're really nailing the production methods, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Well, look at our bakery straight yeah. yeah. oh, yeah. I like it, Seaman. Yeah, you're so, mechanical. So, so through that, so that that'll, do me, that'll do 70 CL and 50s and, and litres. Mm. That will then does the miniatures, so we do minis. I can drink it, I'll tell you. Do you know how they, um, they bottle it all up by hand with the little funnels? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got that machine there, and it just like bottles it all up and it's six bottles up an hour or something like that. We were using that. The problem is it's uh, it's very accurate for its temp temperature sensitive. Yeah. Um, interestingly, because we've got these toys, I check how color we buy it. And it's always under. Always. How much under you buy? Full bar. How much? How much is it under by? Five percent. Five percent. Which is a lot. Yeah. Ours is never under. Ever. No, We've come to the end of our no, brew town tours and yeah. we're here at Hooting Owl. Really How have you found it? <laughs> Amazing. Oh, it's been, yeah. Best. It, yeah, I love the gin tour. You need to book a gin tour with Mark because it's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, you do. your favourite bit about the day? All the gin. All, <laughs> all, the, all of the gin, just the gin. All Try the, the gin. differences between the gin. Yeah, learning how gin was made, how thing different botanicals can affect the gin, and meeting the people who make the gin because that makes the gin taste better. That's very true. Yeah, definitely the stories are really powerful. Yeah, and also. Do, drink your gin straight first, as I've learned, yeah. and yeah. then add the tonic because you don't want the tonic to change the flavour no. of the gin. And it's not, it's two to one, isn't it, the ratio? Or was the it two gin. to one? Gin. One shot to two tonics. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Remember, it's not the other way around. It's not the other way around. <laughs> but yeah, supporting like Yorkshire companies as well. Yes. And finding out about Yorkshire gins and not just going for what's out there. Exactly. Yeah, and we've, we've tasted yeah. like real artisan gin as in handmade gin compared to the commercially made artisan gin um, and you can really taste, you really the, taste difference, the difference yeah. 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 a taste of true Yorkshire a taste of true Yorkshire <laughs> book a tour with Mark Yay. <laughs>